So what you are looking at right now should be this PowerPoint, okay? This is what you should be looking at. Now, if you've pushed this to notability, um, you, that you will be writing some things on there. So just make sure you're ready to go um, in a moment um, so that you can be following along with us today. Okay, we will go back to that in a moment, but first we will go back to that, but you should have this up right now, okay? In Notability, you might. Oh, no, 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 no problem. Do you wanna pull that up? Yep, and then push that to Notability. Now, once you have this PowerPoint pulled up on Notability, okay, the, the words are already filled in for you, but we're gonna be marking this up and adding some extra notes to it, okay? So if you take a look at this picture, what is this picture trying to demonstrate to us? What is this picture showing us? Okay, so it's isn't it like a food chain? Okay, yeah. So we've got two great answers. Somebody said, well, that, it looks like a food chain for the energy cycle. Great. So this is showing us how energy is passed from one living thing to another. Now, no matter where you exist on the chain, you can, or in this food web, you can trace that source of energy back to the sun. Okay? So energy for living things comes from food. And originally, all of the energy in that food can be traced back to the sun. Now, organisms in that first level that use light energy, okay, are called autotrophs. Auto, if you go back to school, Jay, I can help you find it. Auto means self for our purposes here. And an autotroph is an organism that creates sugar for itself using sunlight. So examples of organisms that are autotrophs are plants, protists, uh, and some bacteria, not all bacteria and not all protists, but some of both. Now, generally speaking, this isn't always true, but generally speaking, uh, organisms that are photosynthetic uh, are green, and that is because the pigments that absorb sunlight, of course, reflect green wavelengths of light, okay? And that makes them appear to us as green. Now, organisms that cannot use the sun's energy to make food are called heterotrophs. Both of these words, autotroph and heterotroph, will be on your quiz on Wednesday. And I might ask you a question like, which one of the following is an autotroph, okay? Now, uh, heterotrophs must consume other living things for energy, okay? So are we, are humans, autotrophs or heterotrophs? I'm sorry, who's, who, uh, Sheila, what'd you say? Heterotrophs. How many people agree that we are heterotrophs? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Are we heterotrophs? Thumbs up. Autotrophs, thumbs down. Okay, so I didn't get, the, the answer was pretty immediate in class, so sorry I didn't get to check on Zoom with you guys. But thumbs up was that, yes, we are heterotrophs, okay? And heterotrophs because we must consume other living things for energy. Okay. Um, again, no matter how long you stand outside, okay, I know like, this is probably getting old, I sound like a broken record, but you are never going to start photosynthesizing, right? You are only going to get a sunburn. So it just is not going to work for us. We have to eat other living things for sugar. And you might say, okay, well, wait a second. Nothing was screaming when I ate my bowl of cereal this morning. So what, how was I eating something that was living there? Well, again, you have to think about where did those things come from, 
right? So milk comes from animals and cows in particular, probably. Okay, where did they create that energy from? Well, they were eating the grass that was photosynthesizing to create sugars that are now in that milk, right? If you're eating cereal, well, that's grains. So you're talking about wheat, plants created that material. And then we now have turned it into something that we can use as food, okay? Any questions on this? Okay, so if I said, which of the following is an autotroph? A mushroom, a maple tree, a cat, or a baby? What would you say? Well, I'll repeat that. Which of the following is an autotroph? A mushroom, a maple tree, a cat, or a baby? Type your answer into the chat. Type your answer into the chat. And try to get that answer typed in there immediately. This time we're gonna check in with Zoom first and then we'll see if people agree. All right, so let's see here. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Oh, interesting, okay. I need an answer from everybody. I need an answer from everybody. As we're thinking here, people in class, think, giving, think about, do you agree? So far, Emma, Antron, Zinnia, Jonah, thank you. Everybody else, I need an answer from you in the chat. Okay. So Brianna, uh, which one is an autotroph? And so autotroph again, okay? The choices were a mushroom, a maple tree, a cat, or a baby. Which one is an autotroph? Which one is an autotroph? Okay. Okay, almost everybody. Wait. Oh, okay, so Zinnia. Okay, Adriana, good, thank you. All right, so Zinnia. Good, Corey, okay. Zinnia, just out of curiosity, not to put you on the spot, okay? Good timing. So nobody picked cat or baby. Nobody picked those, okay? Now, the only two choices that people picked were a mushroom and a maple tree. Now, what if I tell you that the difference, or, well, actually, let's go back to Zinnia. Zinnia, what was your thinking about this question? What do you think the right answer is and why? Um, so I think, because it says, um, since like, um, autotrophs are like, um, that produce food for other animals. Okay. I thought mushrooms at first, but like, then I thought of treats. Wait, I don't know, to be honest. Is it okay. those? Well, I think you thought about this a great way. So Zinnia was just laying out how she thought of that autotrophs make food, they're producers, so they make food for other living things. Um, but the other key to an autotroph is that it's not consuming anything uh, in the environment. It's not eating anything, okay? Now, what if I told you that a mushroom is not photosynthesizing? It is actually growing on something that's decaying and getting energy by breaking down whatever it's growing on. Would that change your answer or would that help you decide? Zinnia, would that? Um, yeah. Okay, so what would you say your final answer is then? Um, maple tree. There you go, yeah, be confident. You got it right. So yeah, your final answer for this would be a maple tree, right? A maple tree is a producer. That means it's performing photosynthesis. It's not eating anything in the environment, okay? Unlike a mushroom that has to grow on something else. So although a mushroom doesn't have a mouth, right? It is a decomposer. It is getting its energy from another once living thing by decomposing the material of that tree, okay? Now, oops. 
So once you have sugar, so photosynthesis goal is to create glucose, okay? Glucose is the conversion of sunlight into food. But we still have an issue because even though we have glucose, even though we have glucose, okay, cells can't really utilize glucose to perform their day-to-day -day activities. Glucose is just too big still, too big and too complex. So we have to break down this glucose into a usable form of energy. And we call that usable form of energy ATP. Now, if for right now you can only memorize A, capital A, capital T, capital P, that's fine. But you should know that it's actual, what do those letters stand for? They stand for adenosine triphosphate. And the triphosphate refers to three phosphates. One, two, three. If you're remote, I counted one, two, three, three phosphates, okay? Now, energy is stored in those bonds between the phosphate groups, okay? So if you break one of those phosphate groups off, you end up with ADP or adenosine diphosphate. Now, who cares? Why do we have to have two of, or why are there two of these? Or why are we talking about two of these? Well, because they're extremely important for cellular activity. You can think of a TP, triphosphate, as like a fully charged battery. Like you had your iPad plugged in all night, so it's ready to go. It makes it through all seven classes today. Your ADP is the iPad that is not fully charged. So by lunch, you can barely make it through Emmaus, so hopefully you can charge it. Okay, that's ADP. Okay, now, how does it become charged or not? Well, it all has to do with the bonds between these last two phosphate groups. Okay, remember, energy is stored in those bonds. So if I break off one of the phosphates here, as has happened in ADP, that molecule does not have energy stored anymore, okay? ATP, on the other hand, has additional energy stored in this bond between the second and the third phosphate group. And cells can use that stored energy by breaking that bond. So your cells want to have ATP so that they can break and release that energy and use that energy to perform all of the things they need to do to stay alive, like active transport, protein synthesis, okay? All of the things that cells need to do to stay alive, okay? Any questions on that? Okay, so on the road to developing ATP, okay? The first step is photosynthesis. So in photosynthesis, sunlight is converted into energy in the form of sugar or glucose, okay? Now, I'm going a little fast through this because we've already covered photosynthesis last week. Sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, what would we call those? Products or reactants of photosynthesis? Sheila. Reactants, good. Those are the things that we need to have in order for photosynthesis to occur. So, Damia, if I said, what are the products then of photosynthesis, what would you say? There we go. Oxygen and sugar, which is glucose, right? Now, glucose and oxygen. Now, where does this happen? It happens in the chloroplast of plant cells. Where does it happen in animal cells? So photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplasts of plant cells. Matthew, where does it occur in animal cells? Mm -hmm. 
think of yourself outside. Where does photosynthesis happen for you? What part of yourselves? In, so in the cells that make up your body, where does photosynthesis occur? And I could be, this could be a trick question. There we go. And so Matthew just used a really important vocabulary word. That was a trick question. Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplasts of plant cells, but it does not occur in animal cells at all. And Matthew used the important vocabulary word heterotroph. He said, we are heterotrophs, so we do not perform photosynthesis. Excellent. Okay. Now, uh, plants inside their chloroplasts contain a green pigment called chlorophyll. Chlorophyll absorbs some wavelengths of light, in particular, red and blue. It reflects green light. So that's why plants look green to us. They are not absorbing green wavelengths of light. Now, that absorbed energy, that absorbed light energy is used in the light reactions. And we'll talk about those in a second. Now, Oops, let's back up here. The equation, yes. I'm sorry, which color would what? If they didn't, a great question. So, uh, uh, Chris just asked, uh, what, what color would they be if they didn't look green? Well, fall is a good hint to us of, of, of when what they might look like. So, plants have more than one pigment. They don't just use chlorophyll. They also use other pigments called carotenoids. And there are some plants that don't have green leaves ever. They have red leaves or purple leaves, right? So those are other pigments, okay, that plants could use to perform photosynthesis. The issue with that is chlorophyll is the most efficient. So chlorophyll works the best, okay, or the most efficiently. Whatever color you see is the color that is reflected. Does that make sense? So if a leaf is red, it's reflecting red wavelengths of light. Okay, not absorbing. Okay. Now, the equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water plus light yields glucose plus oxygen. Okay. Now, the more complicated part of photosynthesis is remembering that there are actually two parts to the, the pathway. There are the light reactions and then the Calvin cycle. This picture is a good way to remember the important aspects of both. So this picture tells you everything you need to know. The light reactions happen in the chloroplast, which is on the left here, okay, light hits the chloroplast and transfers energy to the chloroplast. That energy is used to break water into hydrogen and oxygen. At that point, the oxygen is a waste product of the light reactions, okay? But the ATP formed and the hydrogen released okay, continue on to the Calvin cycle, okay? In the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide is combined with hydrogen to form glucose. So by the end of the Calvin cycle, I've created glucose, and then the raw materials are recycled back into the light reactions. So ADP, a phosphate group, NADP, all go back to the light reactions, okay? Now, the last page is just a good summary. So, in the light-dependent reactions, water is broken down and light energy is stored temporarily 
in the energy carriers ATP and NADPH. The Calvin cycle then transfers energy from ATP and NADPH to form the compound sugar or glucose. Okay? Now, this is all the material that will be covered for the quiz on Wednesday. Okay? The new material that we start tomorrow in class will not be covered on the quiz Wednesday. Now, uh, today, well, not today, right now, we're going to work on a couple review questions. So we've got a couple groups in class here. We've got a group of two up front, another group of two, a group of three, and a group of three. If you're remote, I'm going to put you into breakout rooms. Okay, Matthew, you had a question first? I would just study what we went over today because I've summarized everything that we did last week into these slides. And the quiz is this Wednesday. So what will be on the quiz? Autotroph and heterotroph, a summary of the light and Calvin cycle that like, was in the notes slides today, and then just basic idea of where does photosynthesis occur? Chloroplast of plant cells, okay? Now, uh, what I would like us to do now, and I will split you into your breakout rooms in a moment. When I do, you're going to go back to Schoology and pull up the other document, which is the assignment that says cell energy review. Okay. Now, when you pull that up, on, let me make it up on my screen to show you. When you pull that up, uh, okay, it is called Cell Energy Review. Let me show you what it looks like. You are going to work with your partners on this, okay? Now, you are just going to do one and then one through three. And then we're going to come back together and discuss those four questions. Okay. This is not new homework. This is classwork for today that we will then continue working on tomorrow. Okay. Does that make sense? Any questions before you get started? Okay. So you will have about six minutes to talk through this with your group. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, good luck to your group. Let me know if you have any issues, and then we'll come back together and go over these in about six minutes.